Six. Six. She's dead, finally. Oh my gosh. Welcome, welcome. Um, what this video is, well, it's going to be another uh, Magic uh, Arena of the Planeswalkers. I mean, if you click the link, you should already know what you're getting into with this one. Uh, this is a game where uh, I played against, uh, well, I was using uh, Obnoxious, uh, or Obnoxilis, uh, and my opponent used Sorin, the, the white-black Planeswalker. Um, totally, the, the whole game's like a total melee beatdown. I don't even think we had a single ranged figure in the game. Everything was range one. So, uh, very interesting game. You're going to see it's uh, so, something else, what, the, what we go through here. But um, with the map we played on, uh, only because I forgot to write it down or anything else, the name of it was, I'm going to pull it up real quick, uh, Sacred Shrine. Um, I'm going to put the link in the description below in case you want to check it out for yourself. You know, look at the build, build it yourself, play it yourself, whatever the deal is. Um, that'll be there for you. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to fire up the video. Enjoy it. So I'm obnoxious. My opponent is Soren, and here's the initiative roll. Net 20, FTW. Of course I'm taking the first turn. I love to take the first turn, especially with obnoxious as my planeswalker. Um, summoning the zombies. And if you haven't seen my Nissa game, you know, this is the same exact thing as what I did in my Nissa game. As a matter of fact, if you haven't seen my Nissa game, you ought to go watch that one now or at the end of this video. It's savage, savage plays. But also uh, the plan is summon the zombies and use that at any price on the very first one that I uh, summon directly next to the planeswalker. And I will do that. Here it is. However, you're going to see, I forgot to pick up my first three cards <laughs> at the start of the game. So I'm actually going to draw four cards because I'm, I, yeah, I didn't even pick up the first three that I was supposed to have before the game began. And lucky me, I do get to pick up Alter's Reap, which is just such a freaking... That card just feels so powerful when you have the Restless Zombies in your army, because it's like... They're going to respawn probably two or three times, like most games. So Ultus Reap is just kind of like free healing. It's free for healing in a way. Uh, but take height advantage against this poor zombie. Rolling 6-1. to one. Attacking with Obnoxious to the zombie. Uh, getting one sword on the attack means that I do have to roll defense for the potential block of uh, you know by the zombie. <laughs> The zombies one defense doesn't hold up naturally. What's what's the chances? So he dies. That's just from the normal attack. Here are fifteen painful truths you will need to deal with. Number one: Everyone you know will eventually die. Unlike my Nissa game, I uh, actually have Painful Truths in my hand at the start of the game, which I love when this happens, because you can do exactly what I did here, and murder the last zombie to draw two more cards via Painful Truths, and then all the zombies are dead and ready to be resummoned on the next turn, or at least to roll the d20. My opponent moves Soren and ends his turn. Not much happening there, so that clip was very short. Uh, back to my turn. I draw Despise. And, uh, you know, so naturally, here I pull up the card. Going to roll for Darkness Arises at the start of uh, Obnoxious's turn. I roll a 5, but, you know, so that doesn't quite do it. I despise you! So like any good Black Planeswalker would do, I unleash my rage on the weakest person in the vicinity, which is, of course, Sorin. So I drop Despise on him to give him minus 1 attack. Uh, and at this point, I'm summoning the uh, Eldrazi Scions. Kind of just to get some bodies on the map. I intentionally spread them out pretty oddly the way I did because I was trying to avoid giving Soren so many multi-attack um, opportunities because he has the Battle Master one that lets him attack everything you know adjacent to him. So that's the reason for the uh, the weird summoning uh, placement, including for the Ghoul Vanguard here. I place him right next to Obnoxious, just because I don't want him... I don't want Soren coming in and slaying all of my figures in, you know, one swoop, or multiple figures in one swoop even. But I fly Obnoxious over the wall, 
and uh, take a swing at Soren. Get a freaking nice four hits to uh, one shield here. And Soren only has six life, so this is three, three, you know, three damage out of out of six required to kill him. And then I actually get to play right here, and I don't play Barter and Blood as a face-on card. I play it as a face-up enchantment like it should be, and I place that on the Eldrassi Science. So here, this is my opponent's turn. He's placing his Barter and Blood, or not Barter and Blood, sorry, Creeping Dread on my Eldrassi Science. Then he places Tenacity on um, Soren. You may have to pause the video to keep up with some of these. Um, now he's summoning the, oh man, what are those vampire warriors? I'll think of the name in a sec. The, I believe they're from the shadows over Innistrad. I'm checking line of sight here in this part of the video. The Malakir blood chasers, that's them. He's summoning them. And it was quite odd trying to figure out line of sight for both of us with summoning because of all these pillars. But so he summons the three of them. He shoves a divine favor enchantment on them. Plus one attack, plus one defense. So they are now five power and f and four toughness uh, squad. Pretty devastating, devastating there. A lot of potential. Soren's attacking Obnoxious here. He gets four hits, freaking all hits rolled. But luckily, I, I get this this crazy. It's like I have this crazy. I don't even know what it is. Like supernatural power to roll shields when I really need it. But three shields out of four. Back to my turn, rolling for dark, uh, Darkness Arises. I do get a 12, which is exactly what was needed to resummon these guys. So again, attempting to prevent like multi-adjacencies, I kind of spread them around the map. I'm trying to make it tough for my opponent to just yeah kill tons of things and be... You know, I don't want my opponent to have the opportunity to be too efficient with Soren. With uh, with his uh, blade master multi attack ability, I pop blade uh, or sorry bone splinters on these two right here on the uh, the vampire and the Eldrazi scion. The Malakir blood chasers I found were a very high threat at this point. Like I, I put a lot of value on them because of them having five attack and four defense and life link like all kind of put together. That was a disengage from me flying Soren or uh, obnoxious away from Soren to to land adjacent to two of the blood chasers. I play Killing Wave because I'm a savage animal, like just like I did last game, and I kill I kill two of his squads, and so I wipe out all of the blood chasers in one turn by doing that. Uh, my opponent's turn. He's moving Soren. He attacks the zombie, gets a one hit, so I'm gonna roll defense. I do get the one shield that blocks the attack. I do play. All right, so I drew and played Liliana's Caress, so my opponent discards a random card. He discards Hope Against Hope, which is basically a white healing spell that it effectively, or an enchantment that heals two HP from a, or on a, two damage off of a hero. So I elect to take this turn with the Ghoul Vanguard, and he has kind of like a pseudo bonding with the, with the zombies. Where before taking a turn with the Ghoul Vanguard, as you just saw on his card, uh, you can move and attack with a zombie squatty. So that zombie takes high ground and attacks Soren, but fails to get any damage. Now I'm moving the Ghoul Vanguard. Nothing fantastic there, just getting closer to Soren. My opponent now swings Soren around, puts him on uh, even ground with that zombie. Here's the attack against the zombie. He rolls two swords, which is enough to guarantee the kill, because one defense, one life means there's automatic hit going through. Uh, Vampiric Thirst triggers, so out of those two wounds I just put on Soren, uh, he heals two of those, two of them off, uh, so there's only one wound on his card at this point. Uh, so back to my turn, I draw, and then I'm activating Ghoul Vanguard again, so Shambling Ranks of the Dead, uh, means I can, you know, pseudo-bond, let's say, bond with a zombie, so I move that zombie, uh, squatty back there where I did, and then I move with the Ghoul Vanguard. And here, uh, Soren's turn, Avasian's being summoned, kind of in the side corner there. Opponent plays Gideon's Phalanx on Soren, all white creatures within four spaces. 
of uh, the Planeswalker get uh, plus one toughness. I'll catch up with you one of these days, wise guy, and when I do, POW! And so now I see my, my opponent is kind of setting up on high ground where I have no range to force him off of there. So initially I start chucking bodies at him because I'm like, alright, like the zombies will just respawn infinitely. I don't care if they go in and die. So I just chuck that zombie in there, again taking a turn with the ghoul vanguard and moving, moving and attacking with one zombie. Uh, three versus five against the Visium. And then I move in and attack with the Ghoul Vanguard as well. Which should be a four versus five. And an epic one hit out of four. And I, I can't remember. I think my opponent is taking this turn with uh, Evasion. That there's the attack, rolling, rolling five versus my Ghoul Vanguard with four defense, <laughs> who didn't roll a single, uh, a single shield. So he's taken two, two hits from the attack. And then the Madness of Angels, as you'll see here, whenever Avicii ends her turn, uh, deals one damage to each creature. So that includes the Ghoul Vanguard. He is a creature. So the zombie that was in the water died, and then the Ghoul Vanguard took an additional wound. Um, here's my turn. I'm again activating the Ghoul Vanguard and moving a zombie uh, toward toward the action. And then uh, I should move the, the, the Ghoul Vanguard south one space here, and then I attack uh, Evasion. Should be another four versus five. It's two hits to two shields, so nothing happens. My opponent <laughs> plays Liliana's Caress as well. And, um, yeah, unbelievably, I think this was a really... I'm not, I don't know if I call it lucky, but this was certainly a critical point. He forces me to discard Alter's Reap, which is like a huge sustain for, at least in my uh, eyes, for uh, Obnoxious. So I just lost my, my biggest healing card. Uh, and he just attacked Ghoul Vanguard with Evasion. Rolled all blanks, so I, there was no defense needed. Um, so again, back on my turn. I am bonding with a little zombie by activating the Ghoul Vanguard. Little zombie attacks Evasion. Two hits to one shield. I think it's the first wound that gets through. Finally. And then I follow up that little zombie attack with the Ghoul Vanguard attack. Again, that's a three versus two, so that's one more wound on Evasion. My opponent is my opponent plays this one. Uh, yeah, Shefflin's blessing. White has like these, yeah, these like ultra annoying cards to sustain their their creatures, and uh, yeah, this is definitely a. Uh, this is a pretty good one because the plus, you know you get the, the the attack token on there, which makes it just really it's just such a good card. Um, he doesn't need to attack because um, just ending the turn with evasion killed both the ghoul vanguard and the zombie that was adjacent to her. So back to the start of my turn, I'm rolling for uh, darkness arises, and I believe that was an eight. It fails. Um, and, and sorry, so to roll for Darkness Arises, you have to activate a Black Planeswalker. So, uh, I had activated Obnoxious at that point. Moved him. You'll see where I moved him to. My opponent just played Stone Will on Soren. I think it's, uh, when the, uh, yeah, when the Planeswalker has four wounds on them, they get plus two, uh, power. And here, Darkness Arises. Great success. I get a 15, which is really good. Uh, I'm in a position where I'm like, all right, like, Obnoxious is quite safe. Like, I like his position right now, and I'm like, I'm just going to keep summoning zombies until my opponent decides to do something instead of sitting in that corner. So that's exactly my plan is I just start kind of loading them up in the vicinity. Uh, and my opponent says, you know, it likes to take no action during his turn. So again, I'm just going to start sending the zombies to their deaths so that they can do this repeatedly and beat down Evasion. And then I'll, I'll eventually get to Soren 
<laughs> they will never kill him because he will always heal off of them. But I want to get rid of Evasion first. So two attacks at Evasion right here. It should be two, two versus fives. Or two, three versus fives, sorry. So three hits to three shields, no damage. And then I get one hit to one shield, which is also no damage. So my opponent's turn, he basically just activates Evasion and ends turn, which instantly kills both of the zombies that were adjacent to her. Back to my turn already. Uh, I'm activating the zombie. I'm moving in and attacking uh, Evasion. Two hits to three shields, so it's a successful block. My opponent is moving Soren now, activating Soren. He, ro he rolls a blank out. Um, I decide to activate Obnoxious and take that high ground corner from him because I don't want him moving either of his two figures up there again. So I attack uh, Evasion. I should have rolled six dice, but I forgot height advantage. So I just dealt two wounds to Evasion. But immediately... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. My opponent plays Healing Salve and just heals the two damage off <laughs> that I just dealt to him. Um, Evasion attacks Obnoxious back, 3-2, to two, dealing one wound. So I think Obnoxious, yep, is at two wounds right now. Uh, back to my turn. Obnoxious is swinging back. This time, I remembered to roll my height advantage. So it's 6 versus 5. Or 6 versus 4, yep, my bad. It's a 2 to 1, so Evasion's taken one hit from that. At least I think it was a 2 to 1. No, maybe it was a 3 to 1? I must have missed it. Either way, so my opponent, here's another fun healing card. No! Which is basically, I think it heals three wounds, but I think Evasion only had two wounds at that point. So, whatever, nothing, nothing wrong with playing that card. Definitely got to get the wounds off. So, extending Evasion's life, for sure. Evasion attacks Obnoxious here. Uh, 3 to 2 again. So that's another wound. Obnoxious at 3 wounds. And, again, I'm just going right back at... We're taking Obnoxious. I'm attacking Evasion right back. We're, it's kind of a dice off at this point. We're just waiting until someone dies. I roll 2 hits to... Is that 1 shield? I think it was 1 shield there. So 1 wound gets through. Or maybe it was two wounds again. Man, I, I can't watch these dice. <laughs> I'm not watching this stuff very well. That that was uh, a blank out on uh, Obnoxious's defense uh, against an, an attack of four, or I should say, of four hits. So uh, we just went from three wounds to seven, and it just went yeah, it just went from we're doing fine to dire in an instant. Uh, so on my turn, I play corrupt. Deals one damage to a creature, which is, you're going to see I'm targeting Evasion, and it heals the Planeswalker one wound. So basically transfers one wound from um, from Obnoxious to Evasion, effectively. And in hopes of killing Evasion, I play Ever After. And I grab one of the, the, the Blood Chasers. And I actually forgot to activate one of their powers here. But they have four attack, four base attack, which is really good. But I forgot to activate their one power that says when they have a, uh, when they're attacking something with a wound, I think a figure or a creature with a wound, they get one automatic hit, I believe. Uh, I did not, I did not remember to apply that here. I'm not sure if it would have mattered. I get one, I get one hit and what does he roll? One shield. So it would have mattered, I think, as long as I'm remembering the rules right. That would have actually inflicted a wound on Evasion. Uh, but this is Obnoxious Attack in Evasion. Six. Six all skulls, or all hits roll to two blocks means Evasion's dead anyway. And for my third spell for the turn, I do uh, play enchant or the enchantment uh, Duress on the Scions. Kind of, I was half expecting that Obnoxious would die. I mean, he has two life and height advantage, so I figured there was a decent chance he lives. But my opponent rolls all hits against and then against Obnoxious, and then I roll all blanks. So there was absolutely no chance of survival uh, there, no matter what. Look at the mask, with my boy. So and then Soren takes an additional attack against the zombie. 
because uh, he's adjacent to the zombie in the water. So you see Blade Master proc there. And he kills the zombie because, again, two hits is enough to outright destroy a zombie that has one defense. I activate the Scions, but at this point the game's basically over. The Scions don't really have the power to beat Soren by himself. Because uh, as soon as he kills one, he just heals off, you know, two damage. Obnoxious dying there was quite poor for me. And again, which is why my opponent getting rid of my Alter's Reap was such a huge thing. Because by not having Alter's Reap, I couldn't extend uh, Obnoxious. Obnoxious is life. Um, and, and I forgot, by the end of my turn, I forgot to actually discard for Creeping Dread. So I discard one of my useless cards that I can't really do anything with anyway. Because I have no Planeswalker. And then uh, play passes back to my opponent. He is summoning <laughs> one of his squads that he decided to keep in reserve until Obnoxious died. Which was a smart move because Obnoxious is there to mop, you know, mop the floor with squads. So uh, it's the Skurzdag Cultists. He summons the, it's a three-man squad. They are dropping kind of in a line right there. And then he plays Sanctify Charge on them. That's a, that's an enchantment, I believe. And then he moves Soren and attacks the uh, the Scion. Two hits to one shield, which is just enough to keep that Scion alive. It's all I need. All I need is a Scion to be alive. I don't really care about how much damage he has. It's a matter of trying to get really, really lucky for me at this point. So it's back to my turn now. I discard my last card in my hand. Um, and I disengage from one of the uh, Skrzdag cultists there. So he's rolling the disengage. And that uh, that does not connect. And I'm literally just coming here like this is a complete like long shot. But I'm trying to kill Soren here. So uh, I'm attacking him with, uh, with both of them from the uh, even attack first. We get, what is it, three hits to no shields. So there's a legitimate chance I can kill Soren here because he's back again. He's He's got three life left. I was like, oh, well, I'm like, this is my chance. I can get lucky here in a four versus five. It's going to take a lot of luck, but three wounds is all it would take. But that doesn't quite happen. I roll one sword on the attack. My opponent, my opponent plays a hidden enchant on the Skurzdag cultists right here. And I believe he takes a turn with the Cultists, yep. And he activates Dark Bargain, where he puts a wound on one of them. And then they all get plus one attack. So the first one, attacking down on my uh, Scion there. Rolling six dice, my goodness. So a total blank out, Scion gets wiped out. And then the other attack. It's a five versus three. And another blank on a defense. That is the end of the game. Yep. I but yeah, I do think one of the more crucial points was when he used Liliana's caress to remove my Alter's Reap. I feel like Alter's Reap is kind of a crutch for me with Obnoxious between them and the um or between that and the restless zombies, which I just like use as food for like everything. So that was definitely a killer play. And then you have a scene with all the healing, which just was a total struggle for me that game. Uh, otherwise, yeah, my opponent played that really well. So, well, anyway, just leave your comments what you thought went well for me, or if I did something, you know, something poor, or could have done something better. I'd love to hear, because that game, that game was definitely a struggle. Leave, leave the like, leave the comment, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you in the next game.